the focus of our study is on atypical Alzheimer's disease. And what I mean by this is when we consider Alzheimer's disease, we think about memory loss. So the principal area in the brain that's affected is the hippocampus. Now, what we've observed is that there are some patients who come to autopsy that don't have involvement of the hippocampus or this memory center. So we wanted to sort of define a way to look through our large series and to understand are there really differences or is this just a mere observation? And in fact, what we found was that 11% of the cases were hippocampal sparing AD. There was another form called limbic predominant Alzheimer's disease, but what we're focusing on is the hippocampal sparing, mm -hmm. primarily because these patients are misdiagnosed more than 50% of the time. So they don't have the memory impairment. So a clinician isn't necessarily considering Alzheimer's disease. And sadly, they're much younger than what we would consider presenting with abnormal behavior in your 50s, you start to think of frontotemporal dementia. You start to use profanity where you never did, you have socially inappropriate behavior, maybe you're eating off of other people's plates where that was never a part of your personality. The first thing that comes to mind is not Alzheimer's disease. Now another very sort of um, uncommon, unusual form that we actually will see in Alzheimer's disease is cortical basal syndrome. The patients will have a limb intact, but they feel that it's not theirs. It's controlled by some alien or unidentifiable force and the uh, involvement of the parietal lobe is then seen. Now we also will see patients who have visual disturbances. They go to the eye doctor, doctor I don't understand, I can't see things, um, I'm just having sort of unexpected visual problems and the eye doctor doesn't find anything wrong. Had they gone to a neurologist they may have seen that in fact the area of the brain, the visual cortex, is actually heavily involved and it is a form of Alzheimer's disease called posterior cortical atrophy. So with these very unusual, atypical forms of the disease, we really wanted to hone in on perhaps patterns. What, what can we learn by this? Can we move on into the genetics? Is maybe the genetics giving a, a certain predisposition? So we created a, a, another algorithm that helps us to look at hippocampal sparing patterns. So these patients we knew were more often male. We know that they're younger at age onset. They have a shorter disease duration and a much more rapid decline. Sadly, within the first year or two, they're dementing. So you can imagine for the patients, for the loved ones, for the clinicians, we need to try to find some answers. Who are these people? If 5.2 million people in America are living with Alzheimer's disease, 600,000 or more are hippocampal sparing AD, so we need to come up with some answers. So what we've done is we've looked at patterns. We've looked at the frontal cortex, we've looked at the parietal, we've looked at the temporal, and what we find is in fact the frontal, the behavioral syndromes I talked about, the parietal, some of sort of the motor dysfunction, they're even younger than we had originally seen in the whole of the disease, so in their younger 50s. That's when you start to think of mutations, genetic abnormalities, but these patients don't have mutations. There's something about the high involvement of the cortical structures which are involved in uh, thinking, higher level thinking, that just changes everything in these patients. And the temporal, they have uh, language impairments where they can't necessarily understand what you're saying to them. They maybe speak in a different uh, melody or they have a different prosody where they just uh, aren't, can't articulate, but their mouth is fine. It's just that involvement of the cortex. We've really honed in on the patterns within hippocampal sparing AD. We've been able to identify some differences that can maybe help the clinicians understand that in these younger cases, we need to start to consider other aspects. And importantly, there's two principal proteins that are affected. I've been talking about neurofibrillary tangles, tau. It's what you find inside the neuron where it actually can kill the neuron and cause neuronal dysfunction. The other one that's really focused on is amyloid. Amyloid doesn't differ across any of the Alzheimer's disease cases. What that means is in this day and age where amyloid imaging is even uh, becoming more affordable, some, some insurance companies are covering it, if you can see that they're amyloid positive, it can really help the patients to uh, be narrowed down to actually be accurately diagnosed. And so from this, with our large series, we have over 1,800 Alzheimer's disease brains. We have 187 hippocampal sparing. Our uh, move forward will really be to look at the genetics, not mutations, not these abnormal changes in the DNA, but in fact subtle changes that actually may um, cause certain brain regions to be more susceptible to the disease.